Hello everybody and welcome back to A Week in Gaming, but also known as A Wig. A Wig! As you can see, we have gotten a significant upgrade that we've upgraded from Skype to Discord. Discord! Yeah! I don't know if the audio will sound better through Discord or not, or but we're just gonna have to wait and see. Sorry, what was that? Or worse. Yeah, or worse. Depends. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> oh god, I'm just getting oh, fucking doing the show already and I'm already burping up a storm here. That's true. That is true. But the show must go on. The show must go on indeed. So yes, it's it's been a bit since our last episode because our last episode was our spoiler free review on Doom Eternal. Yes. And our opinions on that still stand. Buy the game. Buy the game. But Get the I, game. But if we were to give it an official rating, it'd be a 10 out of 10, buy it now, stop asking questions, just do it. Yeah, go kill demons. Two thumbs up. And also, uh, another reason why we uh, haven't really been doing uh, podcasts lately is because we've just... With the whole pandemic in the world right now, where we're, me and my co-host are... We're both kind of a mixed kind of bag of mixed emotions, bag here. emotions here. Yeah. That there's, is very true. There's weeks where we're like, we should do it, but we didn't do it. And there's weeks where we're like, how about we don't do it? Eh, yeah, no, let's not do it. But now this week, I put my, I finally put my foot down. And, and I said, we're doing a podcast this week. We're doing a podcast. So there, there That was the text some... message. That was the text message that I received. Yes. It was, we're doing a podcast, and I couldn't say no. And I'm actually glad that I'm here. Well, I because there are a lot of stories. Yeah, I sent you a text saying we're doing a podcast this week, and then I just spammed our Discord channel with a bunch of news articles that we're covering this week. Absolutely. So, and I appreciated every single one of them. Well, that's great. So on, uh, so let's just kind of uh, stop wasting time here, and let's jump into the first story here. So. I know this is probably going to be old news by now, but you know what? We still want to talk about it because Sony has finally revealed something having to do with their next gen system. It, you know, a system mm -hmm. that we've covered on the channel previously in multiple different stories. Of course. But this is like, I'd say this is the first official announcement and not a leak, not a rumor, but official from Sony anything, themselves. From Sony themselves. From anything that has to do with the PS5, we finally got a look of, or a look, a sneak peek and a reveal of. <laughs> the controller. Oh, what? Wait. Just the controller? Just the controller. We haven't. We don't. We don't. We still don't know what the system looks like. Wow. All right. I mean, we we still have an idea, judging from the leaked Definitely. photos of the PS5, like test model. However, we don't know if that kit. is. Yeah, that's it, it's the dev kit, but we don't know if that is going to be the exact shape of the PS5. No, dev kits are usually like not always what the actual retail or customer models version of the models are so that's not going to be what the ps5 looks like even but if it was what the ps5 looks like that's what ugly motherfucker yeah it's not going to be pretty if it's going to look like that not going to be pretty but but uh, uh, there's actually also some uh, a bunch of new uh, features and all that or instead of being called like the dualshock 5 or something they actually they're actually calling the controller the dual sense dual sense ooh what exactly does that mean though do you i know do you exactly understand what that it? means oh yeah please tell me tell me about it okay so once you hold the controller in your hands there's going to be okay. little little spikes that come out from the controller they're going to pierce your skin and then it's going to take control over your body and then it's going to turn into a matrix situation whoa that went from zero to a hundred and then 135 <laughs> in like the span of point 
five seconds. Because the that... fact that you're giving both both your arms a duel, and then it's going to pierce your body, it's going to sense what your body's doing, and it's just going to be like a whole transcendent experience. That's why it's called dual sense. Okay, but that isn't exactly what they are saying, according yeah. to this article that I've pulled up here. Yeah, no, it, that, that's a bit, that's a bit. <laughs> The reason why they called it the dual sense because it's basically a redesigned from the ground up version of the PS4 controller and it actually has new features like uh, like adapted triggers and you know texturized grip on the controller a new shape yeah. and according to a rumor there is going to be biometric feedback yes it's going to measure your sweat levels boys it's going to know how sweaty you get while you're playing Call of Duty or Fortnite. That's true. That's true. Let's get sweaty. Like, you're just <laughs> playing Call of Duty, you're getting so sweaty, and the console's going to be like, okay, you know what, that's it, you're getting too sweaty. Turn it off right now. Ooh. That would be brutal. <laughs> but according to the article that I've pulled up here, uh, describe the patents abstract for the... PlayStation 5 controller describes a biofeedback sensor attachment for a controller that is made up of one or more sensors which gathers gather types of biofeedback from players such as heart rate and sweat secretion levels with certain measurements potentially indicative of a player's emotional state and this could have influenced gameplay while you're playing on the PlayStation 5 It's very interesting it's all that's all very like scientific and R&D type stuff that they're having. Yeah, that's that's an interesting addition that they've put in there. Now, if it will work, that is the question. That is the question. It it's always the question if they're whenever someone sort of present some new ambitious technology, will it work? Yeah. Of course, I am hesitant to believe that this will work without a hiccup. I'm sure that there will be problems that will arise. Of course. But judging from a simple image, if we can put one on the screen or it has been on the screen already, from one simple image, it looks not so different from the PlayStation 4 controller. I'm holding one right now in comparison. Oh my god, are you holding a PS5 controller? How'd you get it? Who'd stick? Did you no. Like, I'm holding a PS4 controller in comparison to the PS5 controller, which I've got a photo of right now. But if you really must know, I'm going to sell my soul for a PlayStation 5 controller. Just well, in case. It seems like um, the, uh, the, the, the release of the PS5 itself doesn't seem like it's going to get delayed, so it's still looking like it's going to get released this holiday season. But of course, with the whole pandemic going on, don't expect to find one. Don't don't expect to stroll into your local EB Games or Walmart and be like, "Oh, hey, chap, can I get that PS5 you have in stock there?" And, have, and then they're gonna be like, "Yeah, sure, give us your money." No, you're gonna be you're gonna be like a, a Black Friday situation. You're gonna be fighting people for it. It's gonna be a fight club right in the middle of Walmart, just trying to get a PS5 for your son for his freaking Christmas gift. And why is that, James? Well. Like I alluded to before, with the pandemic and everything, it seems like there's going to be a shortage of parts and all the necessary components to make PS5s. So they're not going to be able to make a substantial shipment of oh PS5s goodness. to stores. So, honestly, I, I feel like each store, like, it, it, like you know, each store of, like, Walmart EV games, they're probably only going to get, like... Five, maybe. Wow. It, if it, that's the case, it's literally that gonna is... be like, uh, like the whole NES Classic and SNES Classic debacle again. See that that right there is where Sony loses me. It's like you have this huge fan base. You know that people want it, but you only release a limited number. I understand that a pandemic is going on, and we don't know when we're gonna get back to some semblance of normal. However, 
I feel like you should increase production level just a, just a tad if you can. If not, I understand. However, there is a lot of people that are there is a lot of people that are going to be upset if they don't get one. Yeah, that's why that's why I said the joke. Like you're gonna have to. There's gonna be a Fight Club in the middle of Walmart for you trying to get a PS5 for Timmy for his Christmas present. Mm-hmm. Because he's gonna have to settle for an Xbox. Honestly, I think both consoles are gonna, are just gonna be like in such short, limited supply. Not yeah, until, both like, of them are. Like you're like. Honestly, like again, this is all this is us just kind of speculating. We're not, you know, throwing out insider stats or anything. But honestly, if you want to get one of these next gen systems, you're gonna have to wait till next year. Absolutely. Like you're gonna have to wait until production levels meet the demand. Yep. For as we are witnessing right now, businesses are taking a huge hit, not only in just sales but also their production of uh items we're seeing it in grocery stores now yes but aside from that uh we will see this next generation of consoles have a weak start but they will pick up later that is how i'm picturing how they're going to uh just i guess they're going to do their initial launch with a limited number of uh supply and then later next year, they're going to re-release the consoles, but on a grander scale, so more people can get them. Yeah, exactly. So don't worry. Everyone's going to get one. But in the meantime... Hang, um, on your, hang on to your PS4s and your Xbox One Xs or your Xbox One Ss or your PS4 yeah. Pros... Or just get a Nintendo Switch, but even then, right now, that's hard to get. So, you know, just hold on to whatever gaming system you have and just treasure it. Care for it. Love treat it. it love treat it like a human being. Treat Don't... it like treat it like your child. Yeah, treat it like your child. Don't don't shower it though. Don't put it in water. That's but that's how not else good. Am I supposed to wash my console? I gotta get the water in there. Just just use Windex. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't listen to us for that last part. Do not watch your consoles at all. We, we, we will not take a responsibility just for don't. anybody who damages the console from us. But we're, we're getting all really right. off track here. We need, to get, we need to get back on track. All right, back on track. Do we have anything else for the PS5? Or are we going to go on to the next No, I don't topic. have anything. I don't have anything else for the PS5. But you did send me a couple of uh, custom controller look so i'll put them on the screen right now for people to see get a quick Absolutely. look because they're going to disappear in the next few seconds yeah we got and... two spider-man and a kratos and firefly a yeah if you didn't catch that last one it's v for vendetta so you know v for vent no there there was there was a firefly there was spider-man god of war and horizon zero dawn that's horizon zero zero dawn yeah what Oh, now I see it. Oh, it's got the giraffe looking thing. Right. Ignore me. I'm Forehead. stupid. I'm kind of stupid. So just don't don't believe me for anything. Okay, I won't believe okay. you for anything. Okay, moving on from that. We're going to uh, our next story. Which involves a certain, uh, a certain GTA. And I know I'm not <gasps> talking about the greater Toronto area that we live in. Oh, <laughs> Coming out with all what? the jokes tonight, just firing all cylinders, bang bang. But <laughs> the next story is that, um, although not not really like an official announcement from Rockstar, the we do know that GTA Six is still uh, or is in development right now. They're still uh, working on it. I'm gonna pull up an article on my screen. Excellent. And I'm just gonna let you. Uh, you know, kind of scroll through it. Thanks to IGN for for providing all these articles. Yes, thank you, IGN. Thank you. So you know, we 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 don't want to get um, hit by them, but again, yes, we're thanking IGN, even though most gamers would not credibly sort IGN as a credible source. But guess what? I do. Hmm. 
So, yes, Rockstar, of course, is working on the next Grand Theft Auto, and, of course, it's going to be bigger than, you know, all the other games, because if there's one thing that Rockstar is good at, it's upsizing and just completely... Bigger is better. Bigger is better, exactly. Like, it sounds like the American motto, just bigger is better. It's like, yeah, sure, yeah. I can take a small uh, fries from McDonald's, but why don't you make us super size? Because we're in the U.S. of A. All right. That's how Rockstar is. Because, like, literally every single game, like, honestly, like, every single game they make, it's like, okay, I like that, but let's go bigger. Like, with GTA V, that, at one point, that was the biggest game that they've ever done. And then we got Red Dead 2. Mm-hmm. And that was even bigger than GTA V, apparently. But now we're getting GTA Six, and that's going to be bigger than Red Dead 2. It's like, these guys don't know when to, uh, you know... Have have a have a goalpost to set so that yeah they can you know have some semblance of an actual goal to strive for. They're always just like, okay, let's make it even bigger. They set their own goalposts exactly, and they they overachieve from the last one. They but that always, yeah, they're like the over, I mean, they're like the overachieving uh, student, your classmate that you kind of resent, but at the same time you're like. How do I be like that? Yeah, I appreciate them because they are a special breed of human being and I just enjoy them. I just enjoy those kinds of people. But of course we uh of course Rockstar has been kind of uh <clears throat> coming under fire for crunch and all that recently, which is very bad. But yep. at least, no crunch, at least we know that GTA six is in development and I don't think we actually have a solid release date, but if I it's were to... all speculation and rumor as far as story goes. Yeah. But the like within the next three years, we can expect to see maybe an announcement, maybe some kind of release date. It's maybe, all kind of up in the air. Maybe some kind of release date. Yes. Quote that. Quote that by me, Rowan Clancy. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on the accolades but, trailer. Just maybe we can see some kind of release date. Maybe see maybe we can see some kind of release date sometime soon. Thanks. Excuse me. However, most of the story is just like story rumor is that it's set in like 70s 80s. And apparently it's supposed to be similar to Narcos or it's like heavily inspired by it. See, I've watched Narco, so I'd be down for that. Yeah. I mean, that's that's as far as I can see. It's all just still in development. Yeah. That's all I can see right now. And this is from a, an article that was posted four days ago. I'm not on yours. I've been flip-flopping between IGN and GamesRadar. Well, I've just been on IGN the whole time, so... There you okay. go. I'm, I'm also posting it to you. Just so you... Don't be saying know where I'm... Just during the show! What? what? Okay. <laughs> anyway, okay. so I think that's really kind of it for our GTA story. So... Yes. Next. Moving on from GTA. Yes, moving on from GTA... We have um, even sadder. We 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 move from uh, kind of okay news to kind of sad news. Of course, oh, with geez. the whole uh, pandemic going around, events have been canceled left hand and right. Like movie releases have been delayed or canceled. Concerts and events have been canceled. And you thought that would stop video game events? Nah. Guess what? Gamescom canceled. E3 canceled. Comic Con canceled. Everything canceled. But, All uh, the pretty things are broken. But so far, Gamescom is the only one that is kind of transitioning to an all-digital event. So, <laughs> Gamescom is even though they canceled the the live in-person event, they will be going towards an all-digital event this year. So you'll still get, you know, your Gamescom fix, and uh, we hope that. Uh, it will go smoothly because sometimes all digital events can kind of go bad. Yeah. 
We've seen it happen before, but hopefully they have everything in order and pull it off. Because if they can pull this off, then we will see more online events take place. That's where most companies are going nowadays, anyways. They're just going straight to on. They're just going straight to online only events. Exactly, and that's kind of what society is going towards now because of Corona. Corona time. Corona time. Yep. It's not Miller time. It's Corona time. Yeah, it's very unfortunate the Gamescom was canceled, but I'm looking forward to seeing if they can pull off an all online event and i'm sure that we're going to see more cancellations before the end of the year yes so we can look forward to seeing which events survive i can't remember when games is exactly happening i think it's in the summertime so expect to see you know because even though it's it's more of a game developers conference where, uh, you know, game developers and all that go about, they still have some announcements at Gamescom, usually. So be on the lookout for that, and maybe I'll post the... Um, maybe I'll, I'll post the official website uh, in the video so you can see when it's happening and what they're doing about it. So There you go. Because uh, um, we show them, some love, some, show them some love and support. They're thinking about the people and all the other developers, you know, trying to stay safe. And Thank you to those... Lovely people, we love you. You're great. You're great. Absolutely great. So great. But um, it's kind of a like a nice, quick, easy story. But now we're going to move on to mm-hmm. our next story. And we've been talking about some negative stuff, but now we're getting into something positive. One positive thing. We have, we have more disappointment. Don't worry. We're coming. We're 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 giving you some ups and downs. Oh. We're roller we're roller coastering. Oh, we're roller coastering for sure, bud. For sure. Oh yeah. But um, I want to hit ask, me with I, it, James. I want to ask you a question, Ro. All right, I I'm I'm listening. What, what what's the question? Have you ever heard of a term called a doom clone? I have. I have indeed. There were notorious back in the '90s when, of course, Absolutely. Doom was the hot was the hot new thing, you know. Everyone wanted to play Doom, but it was too gory for the kids, so you gotta make other versions. And I could list off a bunch of uh, Doom clones off the top of my head, but there is, like, just so many. But some nice quick ones, you know. You got your Bloods, you got, uh... E- there was even a Bible game that was literally a Doom clone as well. And, yeah. and of course, but Doom was also, of course, very moddable, so people could make their own Doom clones within Doom. And that's kind yeah. of how that modding scene happened. But one bizarre kid-friendly Doom clone that was available only by purchasing cereal. Oh, I think I know where you're going with this. Have you ever? Is have it? You ever, have you ever had a cereal called Chex? You like? Chex? I have indeed. I have indeed. You like Chex, bro? Oh, I do. So, back in the uh, <laughs> late, late 90s, we got a game from the cereal brand Chex called Chex Quest. And it's kind of uh, gotten a bit of a cult following because, again, it's just a E, basically an E version, or I guess you'd say E10. E10, E10 and up, version, yeah. Yeah, E10 and up version of Doom, but except instead of you killing demons, you're killing or zapping aliens out of existence. Mm. I'll probably throw up some uh, some OG Chex Quest uh, gameplay right now, but it's yeah, getting... They even a... have images of the new HD remaster. Well, that's what I was Already? about to get to. It's getting an HD remaster this summer. Hell yeah. And it's actually it actually has a bunch of new uh, features that is coming with it as well. Oh, really? Like, it's boasting upgraded Afric... Uh, gra- Afrix? Uh, Af- boasting upgraded Afrix. You like those Afrix kids? <laughs> but it's boasting upgraded graphics, six playable characters, split-screen multiplayer as well. Like, all these new... That's all these incredible. New features. That is incredible. And... <clears throat> excuse me. But, uh... 
it's definitely like a, it's not just because we've seen a trend in gaming where we've seen old games kind of just get a HD like upgrade and then just thrown back onto the uh, you know the Steam Shop or the e the... even with eight bit games they even HD some eight bit graphic games or even the like old block uh textures for like old resi games yes or tomb raider well we have gotten so many of the hd collection of those games where it's actually just kind of a cleaned up model of the character and not much else has changed yeah that's that's kind of what i was leaning towards like we've like yeah. you know with the turok games those got hd remakes but or remasters but uh, that was kind of it. They just cleaned up the textures, made it look a little bit better, and then just kind of released it on the store. Not really changing too much. But yeah. this one, again, I, wa I wanted to talk about this one because, again, you had those uh, graphics, or you had those um, features that I t just talked about, like upgraded graphics, six new playable characters, and even split-screen multiplayer. Like, that is an HD remake that I want to see more of, not just splash up the colors a little bit and then, uh, then bam, charge 20 bucks for it. There you go. No. I want exactly. To, if you're gonna if you're gonna remake an old game, at least try and like add something new to it. Those are the kind of remakes and HD remasters that I love, absolutely love. That's why I've been enjoying the Capcom remakes because all of the Capcom remakes have actually been remakes. They have just remade the entire game, but in a similar style that feels nostalgic. Exactly, like. It kind of, and that is what this seems like they're trying to accomplish with Chex, or Chex Quest. Yes, exactly. So I'm definitely going to be getting it. I hope you will get it too, and then we could try it out when it comes out in the summertime. I don't think there's an official solid release date for it. They just kind of basically I said that. Uh, yeah, they they just kind of said uh, it's coming out in the summertime. If you go, if you look on their Steam page, it's listed as summer 2020 release date. So, we have something to look forward to in the summer. I'm looking forward to it, indeed. But, um, you know, I feel like I've, I've done mostly all the talking for this entire podcast, so <gasps> I think uh, I'll, I'll let you take this uh, next story. Oh, is, is it the one that I am thinking of? The more depressing news? Um, shall, shall we go down a, a bit? Unfortunately, Again? unfortunately, yes, because we have leaked concept art for a cancelled game that might pique some of our viewers. Yes. A leaked concept art, I guess, video has dropped regarding an, uh, Warner Brothers Montreal game. And I'm sorry for all those Superman fans out there. Yes. It's a cancelled Superman game. I don't think they released a video. I think they only released an image. But It is just a single image. Yeah, However, a, a image. lot a lot is packed into that. Just And of course, uh, as soon as we met Superman, it's going to be thrown up on the screen, so you're looking at it right now. But the concept art looks amazing, though. Oh, I feel hurt just looking at a single image. Because the idea of being Superman and flying through Metropolis or just across the world, going from Metropolis to Gotham to Central City, Star City, so on and so forth, it's just... Wow. I, I never thought that I would want a game more than just seeing a single image of Superman flying through a city. They've tried to make, yeah. like, uh, like they've made Superman games in the past, you know, like your Superman 64s, and there was even a Superman yeah. game on the Xbox, but that was trash as well. Superman hasn't really had the best time when it comes to games, and there's been so exactly. many different cancelled, like, Superman games that, you know, have had video footage and all that leaked over the years, but I feel like they were kind of giving it, because even at one point, Rocksteady was apparently, or... It was rumored that they were working on a Superman game, but then I think they came out and said, no, we're not. But, like, Superman's kind of been done dirty when it comes to video games, so I kind of want to, like... to just release a Superman game. 
Yeah, I feel like this is the biggest problem when it comes to a Superman game, personally. And that problem is the flying mechanics. They can't just nail down a like specific flying module that works for a game. Like, I've tried Iron Man. I've tried the Iron Man game. Doesn't really work out. It's kind of hard. Wasn't that the, wasn't that the movie tie-in Iron Man game? Yes, indeed it was. Oh, and God. I've tried that original I've tried that original Xbox game, Superman, where I think you're fighting Brainiac. It's yes. like an old like it's block textures again. Yeah. It's like block texture Superman. It is yes. funny to look at right now. It's funny looking but, at how horrible to play. Oh, it's awful. Because the flight controls are the worst. And I think that is where game developers hit the wall and they can't get past it. And I feel like Rocksteady could have done it. Rocksteady could have done it if they paired up with another company that was like, all right, let's try this. If Rocksteady can nail Batman, and if Sony Insomniac Games can nail Spider-Man, someone out there can nail Superman. Somebody can. We believe in you. And if they can nail down Superman, maybe we can get a Flash game. Just a thought. That's another one that's been like, Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Yeah. Because there's, so, like, there have been rumored, even, and again, that's another one that's been, like, rumored, leaked, and it canceled. Like, there's, you can find footage online of, like, all the canceled Superman games, and even the Flash games as well. So, that is just more sad news regarding Superman or even DC fans that have enjoyed the Arkham series. Not even just DC fans. People who have enjoyed the Batman games. And I'm specifically talking about Arkham Asylum, uh, Arkham City, Arkham Knight, Arkham Origins as well. I throw Arkham it Origins in there. It gets an honorable mention. Yes, it gets an honorable mention. But the top three are Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham... Or- uh, no, not Arkham Origins. Arkham Knight. Go... Look at those three if you have not played them. Play them. And please give them a shot. They are. Because they're just fun. They are absolutely <laughs> some of the best superhero games and best Batman games of all time. But I led with superhero because you could just say, you could just look at it and be like, yeah, it's one of the best Batman games. But out of all the superhero games I've played, Batman, the, the Arkham series, still is at the top of the totem pole because Rocksteady just went all out. With that, and I gotta, they... I gotta step back from that ledge, my friend. Why do you gotta step back from that ledge? I gotta give Insomniac a round of applause because yeah, yeah you're right. I'm I... more of a Spidey. I'm yeah. more of a Spidey fan than a Batman fan, and that I... is why I separate the two because sorry, both of I... them. Yeah, I apologize. I for the viewers, Rowan has played Spider-Man, the, play... the PS4 Spider-Man game. I have not. So that's why. I, me, my opinion, I hold the Batman Arkham games to a high standard when it comes to superhero games. But I have heard good things about the Spider-Man game, and I don't hate that. I will not knock it. I have not played it, so I can't form an opinion on it. You know what? You can hear it here first, first, folks. I will drop off my PlayStation with Spider-Man. Download it on it. Just so you can play it. Are you going to leave it like a web, like Spider-Man? Yeah, just like, just present, like web like, it up. Like, here you go. <laughs> because I hold Spider-Man and the Arkham games, like all of them, are at the same totem pole for me. In terms of superhero games, Insomniac Spider-Man and all of Rocksteady's Batman Arkham are on the same level. Like, they all hold first place. They're shaking hands right now. And that I mean, is how... I mean, I mean, there's a sequel in development to Spider-Man anyway, so you better get ready for that. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready, dude. I think there's even Hit me with spoilers it. from it. Oh my god. The story from this... The Spider-Man game, we're getting off topic, but... Just play the game. Play Spider-Man. It's awesome. Play Arkham. That's awesome, too. I enjoy all. I enjoy all of it. If you're one of the yes, if you're one of the people that have fortunately been 
uh, temporarily laid off or just laid off in general. We feel sorry for you, but we definitely, if you have a PS4, play those games. They're, they're highly, yeah. highly recommended. And I'm sure if they're not on sale right now, they'll be on sale soon. Yeah, they're constantly true. going through sales, so I mean, it's a good time to pick it up. I mean, even Just though said. even though you don't like it, Ro, you can even pro probably find cheap copies. If you want physical copies anyways, you can probably find them cheap on eBay. Absolutely, you can. See? There you go. Like, there's, there's That's... no shortage of uh, supply for these games. Not a question... Like, not a doubt in my mind. Not a doubt in my mind regarding the superhero games. However, we've gone off topic far enough. Yes. That now, is our superhero game rant done for today. Toss that out. Yes. Now, um, now let's transition to a story that I kind of wanted to talk about. And all right, hit me with it. Let's go. Th this is going to be a segment I like to call, I Get Mad at Things. Oh boy! Because Here it's we one go. of those stories that I'm gonna get a little riled up and a little heated up. So you, there might be some swearing. So I'm sorry for those who are not faint of heart. All right, throw up the not not PG segment. Like this is <laughs> hardcore, not PG. Everything that comes out of his mouth is fueled by rage. So go. Our our friends over at the ESRB have finally. And I mean, finally, updated their series of logos to finally include a little thing of text in games that that have in-game purchases to finally say, in-game purchases. So, of course, I'm, I'll throw up an image of uh, what it looks like, but as you can see... Oh, and also includes random items under it as well. So these are for those games that, of course, have the loot boxes and um, the in-game purchases and all that. So it took them this, like, we're in the year 2020, and we're finally, finally getting an update to it when the whole loot box and all that kind of series craze started back a few years ago, all the way back in, like, 2016, 2017. Yep. So... Like, back when we had controversies surrounding games like Overwatch and Shadow of War and the infamous Battlefront 2, the ESRB, the king, the, king, <laughs> the one, the, the, the game that basically broke, the straw that broke the camel's back, Star Wars Battlefront yeah. 2. Like, we had Overwatch. It was fine. Overwatch... Could, Overwatch could be was many. fine, but it still it still had a little bit of controversy surrounding it. But... Absolutely, it did. And Shadow of War didn't really make sense for loot for like the loot boxes or like microtransactions to be in that game. No, it didn't. But they still what? did it. They still did it anyways because guess yeah. what? Most video game companies would much rather squeeze you for every last dollar in your wallet. Yep. Than actually give you a good game. That's seen, been seen by companies like EA and Activision. They only care about getting money from you than you actually having enjoyment and playing the game. That's why they have all those time boosters and time savers and in-game currency and all that. So you just... You, basically, you no longer spend... We're in, we're in Canada, so this is going to be inflated prices. You no longer spend your $80 for most games. And that's it. Yeah. For some games, it's okay, spend $80, and then maybe $40 for the season pass. Oh, and there's in-game tra microtransactions, so, you know, maybe we'll spend about uh, 10 maybe 20 bucks here and there. Oh, there's another uh, thing for, okay, I'll spend another $30. Like, they basically like to, again, squeeze you for all the money you have, but that's not really, like, the focus for what I'm mad about for this. What I'm mad about, again, is what I, alluded, I, what I alluded to earlier. It's 2020, and now the ESRB is finally being like, huh, we should update our thing, because, you know, there's in-game purchases and loot boxes. Maybe parents are going to want to look out for that, but 
I don't think most parents or kids even read the backs of the boxes anyways. This is kind of the ESRB just trying to save their asses. That's true. Just in case if they try and get sued or something. Actually, I wonder if they could actually get, like, if they would be held accountable even with this on their games. But uh, probably not, but that's probably a whole legal question that I want to get into right now. But Yeah, that'll, ta that, that'll take a little bit of research, just to double check. But... Just to double check, but... Yeah, you get, yeah to, to the ESRP, I say to you guys, yeah, you're kind of late. Where were you when Battlefront 2 was, like, the headline of all, even non-video game outlets? We're saying, wow, this company is grossly, like, exploiting children and people for their money, and just absolutely charging up the ass for their microtransactions. And yet, when you looked on, on the box of the game... There was no mention of loot boxes or anything in the game. So parents probably bought their kids, or at least their teens, because I think Battlefront 2 is rated T for teen. Yep. Battlefront 2, and had no idea that it had in-game purchases. And again, this went on, it's not just Battlefront 2, it just went on for years. There were so many other games that have been released now that require, or not require, but have in-game purchases in them, and that box still didn't show up. It's only until now, during a freaking pandemic, that the ESRB has finally, like, woken up from their coma-filled sleep and was like, oh god, we, we need to add in the, the logo on it. Oh, oh, oh shit, get it! So, and then they fell asleep again. Yeah, and they, exactly, they're like, oh god, we need to add go, go. They've risen from their slumber, and then they went back down. So, but you do have to, like, at least they got on it. At least they got there. Yeah, they, at least we they have put to it on them there. For at least putting it on there. Exactly. They get, yes, they get a small amount of credit for them yes. finally putting it on there. But again, all the they other get a times, thumbs up. All the other times that it should have gone on there, they were like, nah, let's not do it. Unless there was some issue that we don't know about. Yeah, which would make sense. Yeah, the issue was the but the issue was we that video game companies wanted to make lots of money before they could actually put a warning on there. But that's the issue. They got there in the end. Thank them for their service. They, and... got, they got there in the end when we see the rise, like basically, kind of like. Well, I mean, not not to say that's going down, but they basically put it on there when. No one's really putting loot box. Well, I mean, people are still putting loot boxes in their games, but not much of the big AAA games are relying on those loot boxes now. Yeah. Well, uh, the new uh, first-person shooter game, uh, Valorant, the beta just came out. Uh, it's closed beta. However, you can get a Twitch drop from it. You can only it get does into have... it through a Twitch drop. Yeah, you can only get into it through a Twitch drop. However... All Twitch streamers that are streaming Valorant can give you a code, so keep that in mind. However, they do come; it does come with small microtransactions, but it's only cosmetic. That's what we're seeing. We are seeing more just cosmetic purchases than, you know, well, some companies are still doing like the DLCs, which makes sense. Like story DLCs, that's something that you can pay for, but more companies are leaning towards the cosmetics, and that is where people get trapped. It's a trap. The, it's a trap. It is fully a trap. So, with this, I'm hoping that they specifically like nail down on the games that have just the cosmetic purchases. Like, DLC, I feel like that is something else entirely, because you're paying for another portion of the game. Yes, DLC, doesn't make sense. DLC is but. a different beast, but if they had, but if DLC, if like store DLC was like more of the problem, then that would instead say game contains additional DLC purchases. But no, it's more geared towards again the loot boxes and the microtransactions. Those are more the bigger issue at hand here. Yeah. So with some with some games, story DLC is is it's welcome. And not as hated as it once was. Exactly. 
But again, I appreciate with, with the... some. Sorry, go ahead. I appreciate some good story DLC. That is my ten cents on that subject. I'm completely okay with with story DLC, but again, the issue is the loot box and microtransactions. Those are not okay because again, they're exploitative, and some games even like rely on you to spend your money on it. I feel like we've ranted long enough in regards to loot boxes. Thank you, ESRB, for be- for being here. Thank you for finally three putting in the label in three years, three four late. years late. Three, four years late, but it's okay. (laughs) You got here. It's okay. Thank you for coming to the table. Now, moving on. The kids that showed up late to the party. Moving on. From the ESRB, we're moving to a game that does have some microtransactions. However, they have more of a problem than microtransactions. If it's the one that you're that I think you're good about to start talking about, oh boy, do they ever! They have more problem with cheaters. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about Call of Duty Warzone. The um, uh, the battle royale is it, is it the for newest battle in, royale? Yeah, it it is. Well, yeah. yeah, it is the newest one. The newest one to come out the come out of the gate, and uh, you know the quote unquote Fortnite killer. Yeah, well, really except they ran into a, a gigantic steel steel bricked wall. Like there was bricks, but they coated them in steel. Oof. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Infinity Ward came out. Uh, how many days ago? Four days ago. Tweeting that they issued seventy thousand bans worldwide. To protect Warzone from cheaser from cheaters, that's an absurd number of cheaters. If I do say so myself, seventy thousand. Can that you believe that? That is definitely an absurd number of cheaters. But when you launch, when they launched the free battle royale, it didn't have any anti-cheat software. So exactly. And there and there's been so many like streamers, and they have so many clips of just blatant cheaters and hackers that they were playing in the game. And yet... I mean, we could pull up a couple of... Well, well at least one. One clip in particular comes to mind. It's, and it's that one you sent me like a week or so ago with uh, with Tim yes. and all that. Yes. Hats off to Tim the Tapman for said clip. I don't know if we can play it, but we're probably not going to. But if you go look it up, it's uh, Tim the Tap Man. It's probably one of his most viewed Call of Duty videos. We can, it's... we can put a link in the description. Yeah, there's a, there's a link in the description. Check that out. Uh, and just be blown away, because it might just deter you from playing Call of Duty. It's At least deter- on PC. It's deterred us both from playing on a PC, that's for sure. Yeah. But, uh, with regards to the tweet that was... Four days ago, 70,000 players banned. Today, or no, yesterday, according to this article, uh, console players of Call of Duty Warzone have opted out of the crossplay option due to how many PC cheaters are still in the game. Mm-hmm. And that is because A, no anti cheat software. Infinity Ward. What's up with that? Big questions coming out of, uh, you know, your player base. Uh, two, you have, like, what, 10, 10 20 guys manually reviewing uh, player accounts? You, what, are you, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? They're clearly apparently, off. That's what they're doing. Apparently... There are, like, just a a group of guys sitting around a table just going through people's accounts and just being like, huh, this guy that is, what, 
level 25 has won every single game that he has been in and has gotten like 50 plus kills you think that's you think that's legit you think that's uh you know you think that's good i think, you think it's good you think yeah good game good game yeah, yeah good let, game. let him let, let him play let him play yeah go ahead yeah it's fine Oh, look at that. He doesn't miss a single shot, and he has like a 70 to 80% hit ratio. Cool. Neat. He, he just must be really good at the game. He's, that's insane. Best player in the universe. Oh, like, my God. Like, you can that, tell how I, how, how I feel about it. But <laughs> Let's have that man uh, join Cloud9 and win some gaming tournaments for them. Fuck. Yeah, exactly. You know, Cloud9, Optic Gaming... Phase, any of them, any of the above, hit them with it. But uh, yeah, that, that kind of just speaks to a larger, a larger issue with cheaters in the, at hand, and it it does read that like it's really sad that a feature of like that so many people are asking for for crossplay because they want to play with the other people on the other consoles. Like it's a way to bring people together. And yet, oh. with this one game, the cheating situation is so friggin' bad and blatant that they're not really doing the best they can to stop it, to stop cheaters and all that, or even put some cheat software in there. People are starting yeah. to just be like, you know what, let's go back to the old ways. I, I want to play with the people on PlayStation, Xbox users want to play with the Xbox users, because they don't want to deal with that. And I agree. Like I would, I would be furious if I was playing on PlayStation and some guy from PC server just came and just swept and took the game away. And it's like, wow, how is it, like, what is this? Like, where, where does it? Oh, he's on PC. Oh, oh, he's a cheater on PC. Come on. Yeah, that is the feeling. That is the general consensus of people who have been playing Warzone. So you might not agree with us. But, you know, you might not want to play Warzone, or you might. I, we leave it up to you. We leave it up to playing, you. If you're still playing Warzone right now, even with crossplay, I salute, I salute you, because clearly you have... Balls of steel, balls and of steel you and like... Are, and are a glutton for punishment more than me and Rowan are, because... Yeah. I think I, I can't remember if we actually did encounter like ourselves. I I can't remember if we did encounter a cheater or not. I, actually, yeah, we did. We did encounter a cheater in one of our matches, and yeah, we were just like, instead of being like, "Oh shoot, darn, let's try again," we were like, we actually watched the guy, and we were doing, and we just basically looked at each other and just said, "No, I'm done with this game." Yeah, no, that's not. Like, a, let's if, let's if, not. If, if this is how it's gonna go, then no, no, I don't want to play this. I'm not going to play your free Battle Royale with hackers that want to get hollow wins just because they can't play the game properly. No, thank you. Let's go back to Apex. Yeah. And even then, I'm more inclined to start, you know, because we both got a beta key. We might just start playing Valorant. We already have game, started playing Valorant. It's awesome. And it's tons of fun. If you don't have a beta key, go try it. Expect to see uh, some videos, some up, uh, some videos on the channel coming up soon, because uh, we're definitely enjoying that, and that it seems to be the new hotness right now. As of as yeah. of April nineteenth, twenty twenty, it seems to be really hot. I mean, it's it's been hot for the last couple of weeks, but you know, I mean, it's not even in like it's not even released yet. We've gotten even, into the beta. And it's not even out yet, and we're no, enjoying no. it. Exactly. And I can't wait. I can't wait for this game. This is going to be insane. The game so, is supposed to really come out officially till summer. So, uh, along with playing uh, Chex Quest, we can play Valorant at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. Uh, but yeah. I think that... I think that's it. I think that runs us out of our, our stories. Uh, excuse at least me, I sir? No. <gasps> what? No. You've got one more? I got You've got one more? more. <gasps> Hit been, me with it. I'm excited talking, now. We, we kind of, like, we were talking about crossplay and all that, and, and kind of slid, slid more back into PC gaming with Warzone, and or mm -hmm. Valorant and Warzone, but you want a surprise? I'm, ex I'm excited. Yeah. 
did you ever hear about a game back in the late uh, 2000s called Crisis? Mm, I have. I've played two of them. And the whole meme it spawned of, can your computer run Crisis? Can it run Crisis? I've I've even asked that of myself. Can my computer run Crisis? The I've, answer, I still don't know. I haven't run Crisis on this computer. <laughs> <laughs> I think my computer can run. I think my computer can run the original Crisis and all that now. But I think prepare, my computer can run Crisis Three. But guess what? Prepare to ask your ask that same question to the computer again because the first original Crisis, all the way back from 2007, is getting a remaster. Oh boy, I'm and, ready. And not only is it coming to PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, but it's also coming to the Nintendo Come. Switch of all places. Ooh, that's going to be fun. So Crisis now, on the go? You want to play Crisis on the go? So all right, here you go. Of asking if, you're, if your um, computer can run Crisis, ask the question, can my Switch run Crisis? Yeah, that's... That's a answer, big question. And the answer is yes, apparently. Not not the original Crisis, though. Can't nope, do can't do that. The remaster, though, yeah, I can run it perfectly fine. Oh, that's going to be great. Like, I think that's the most shocking thing out of the whole announcement. It's not that it, the original Crisis is getting a remaster. It is, it's, it's coming on the Switch, too. It's like, what? Excuse me? Yeah, you, you might say, what? But... It's also going to be really, really good. I have a feeling like it's going to be good. Because it's Crisis. Where can you go wrong with a Crisis remaster? Now, I can't remember off the top of my head when the release date for the Crisis remaster was, but I want to say it's in June. Well, I would assume that that is the case. The trailer is going to be up on the screen while we're talking about the story anyways, but I just, I can't remember off the top of my head hmm. if it was, if, it was uh, if they ever actually gave out a solid release date or not. But, uh, <gasps> yeah, you know, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, throw in the release date to, um, if we actually do find it or if we were proven wrong in the on the video screen right now. Yeah, if if we were proven wrong, we will post it. If we were proven right, you will have a release date, or at least a rumored release date. Exactly. Up either, on screen. Either right or now. is good. But, um, yeah, get ready. Um, if, if I, I remember playing the original Crisis. Uh, I think it was on the Xbox 360. I think I got it for, like, free from, like, Games for Gold or something. But, um... Yeah. I, it, was, it was fun. Yeah. I remember playing Crisis 3... I remember playing Crisis. The I didn't only, play Crisis only, Two. Oh, I played. That's the one I really played the the, the most is Crisis Two. I, I I think I played Crisis Three maybe once, but I can't remember. It's beautiful. Crisis Three is amazing. That was but, that was actually a game I was really anticipating back in the day, but never really got to play. Oh, I recommend it if you can get your hands on it. I recommend it. Well, I mean, you could just go on the the. Origin store, if you're on PC anyways. You can just go on Origin and just get it for like 20 bucks. That's true. And I know my computer can... <laughs> my computer's got all the most updated specs and graphics, baby! It's got oh, them... Oh yeah, it's fresh. <laughs> it's got them fresh graphics. It can get the run fresh. anything on Ultra HD. Mm. But my computer can't do ray tracing, though. That's that. My video card can't handle that. That's true. Sorry, that I, is true. sorry. I don't. I don't have a 2080 uh, TXI RTX uh, Lick My Nuts Special Edition graphics uh, card in my computer. Uh, by the way, if you are on Origin, if you're on the Origin store and you're looking at Crisis Three, it's nine ninety nine. Oh, it's only ten dollars. It is only ten dollars. Hmm. If you have never played Crisis Three before, and if you can run it, at the time of this recording, it. April nineteenth, twenty twenty. Crisis 3 is $9 on Origin right Origin. now. $9.99 for the standard edition. But if you've got that premier nonsense and you and you love Origin, it is $15. But it's the deluxe edition. I don't know what comes in the deluxe edition. I don't know what... Mm, deluxe edition. 
Okay, so you get you get an extra skin for a Gauss rifle, the soundtrack to Crisis, and the Overkill pack, which is a gun, which is an extra gun. Lame. If you just want the base game, you can just get it for ten dollars. Yeah, that is all. Yeah, I think that's the smarter option. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to a Crisis remaster. I don't know how everyone else is feeling about it, but of I'm course, ready for it. Yeah, of course, when the remaster comes out, I'm going to be playing it on PC. Of I'm, course. I'm not getting it on Switch, even though it would be funny to get it on Switch. I don't have any way of recording gameplay from that right now, so PC it is. PC it is. I'm here for it. But with that being said, now there is no more uh, stories that we have. Oh, but we do have one final thing to say before we part ways with our wonderful audience. Well, if it's what I think it is, we need to give a proper outro. Exactly. And thing. I leave that in your hands. So I hope you guys enjoyed the kind of well, new newish format. I mean, we again, we switched over to Discord to do this so let us know if the audio sounds better or if the show has just gotten better in general at some point we're looking to add in webcams so that way you don't have to just stare, stare at uh, our icons blinking every single time we talk exactly so with that being said this has been a week in gaming this will probably go up on 420 so I hope you guys have a good 420 you know you gotta 420 Smoke that weed. Eat, eat, your, eat, eat your gummies. Eat your brownies. Get high. Get, get high. As f- get that green in you. Get, exactly, eat, get your green. eat, eat your greens. Eat your greens. Kiddos, eat your greens. That's like the one day that can actually be applied <laughs> as a joke. Eat your greens, kitties. Gonna get high. Yeah. Well, also, eat broccoli. Eat spinach. It's good for you. No, don't eat. I'm looking at you, little food. Timmy. You. Broccoli and I see you. Is nasty. Don't eat it. Delicious. Would not recommend. With an adult. it's delicious with the right spices and sauces. You gotta, you gotta get the good, good no, on no. the green. Okay. Sorry. The only All right. I'm having is that weed, baby. Oh god. Oh. I'm gonna get some high. Water Literally, this shown. entire ending, this entire ending of our podcast just went. Out the window, we're not PG anymore. We're in Canada, by the way. If we've not mentioned it, we're in Canada. We're Canadians, so, and weed is legal, baby. Enjoy your weedies. Enjoy your weed evicts, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But if you didn't already know, my name is James Keith. And my name is Rowan Clancy. And this has been A Week in Gaming. Also known as... You Week Up Get it!